Tred Rosenthal for Hawaii, 17 years old from Manhattan Beach. Not a single senior in the starting lineup for this Triton squad. They played twice last year. Hawaii won six of seven sets. However, the Bows have lost to the Tritons in 2021 and 2022. And Charlie Wade was there when it happened in both of those times. Head coach for the Bows and has been the head man since 2010, has made six NCAA tournament trips in the past nine seasons. And the man running the Tritons program would be Brad Rostratter. Year number two for him already with these 11 wins. That's three more than he had his first year. Tritons are unranked. They're 11 and 13 overall. They're six and five at home. Hawaii 21 and five, their overall record. And they are four and four in conference play. Gabe Dyer. Junior is going to get us started from the service line. One of the things, Kirsten, that the Tritons need to figure out is what kind of pressure can they apply from a service perspective. Yeah, and they know Hawaii has strong middles, and that's something they've been working on in practice, um, defending the middle, defending those sharp angles that they hit, and feel like Hawaii, when pins, their pins are in system, they're great, but when they're not, so they're going to try to get Hawaii off the net more. Anthony Scherfon is successful on his first swing, goes cross court, the BYU transfer. Scherfon, six foot six junior, 13 in white, had 14 kills a match ago on 37 swings. He leads the team in kills. So two service errors, you got one from Dyer and Laura. And those are two of the guys that probably don't bring it pace-wise as much as others. Right. Is it, for them, is it more target-based? Yes, tonight it's target-based. They are going to focus on, on Louis Kanako, serving him down the line, and Keone Thim. Feel like they can be successful. Nice swing, Six, uh, if they serve them. Successful would be Jim Garrison, 6'9". Redshirt sophomore from Manhattan Beach. He is now air free in his last 16 attempts. And pardon me, Sakanoko. Please don't be mad at me. <laughs> Quick into Guillerme Voss, and he misfires. Speaking of how well he's been doing yes. offensively, one air in his last 38 swings. His first swing is a hitting air to start this one. Yeah, and that's something with a new setter. I mean, like we talked about before, Tread. Rosenthal, 17 years old. Location is something he's been working on, and uh, connecting better with his middles is something they've been focusing on quite a bit. Jim Garrison misfires there. So already, every single one of the points for Hawaii have come off service miscues from University of San Diego. And there's an overplay after the pass. Selcho slugs it to the surface. Issues in ball control on both sides. Yes, I think it's a little bit of nerves. You know, Hawaii has traveled a long way to get here, like they always do. But uh, you see San Diego's fired up. Hawaii, their last four regular season matches in California. They had an early, if you want to call it that, senior day back in <laughs> March. And Sherfon brings oh. the goods. Watch out, the toss is on. When his toss is on, he is pretty unstoppable. I feel like when he makes one serve, he definitely has a ring or at least three or four. And a great serve. Makes me think of the match right, earlier right. this season where he had six aces in a win at home against USC. There's a first swing from Sakanoko and it's Doug. Schellinger, his first swing happens to be his 300th of the season, by the way. And down the line, and after the dig try from Sherfan, it is a score for Hawaii. So they finally get a swing and a score, and they are within one. Yeah, and they know how to use those smart shots to little set over down the line, slow up uh, the speed of things. Here is the aforementioned Sakanoko, freshman from Paris, France, bringing the heat from the service line as Schelliger and Laura freeze, and they get indecisive. 
Yeah, and Sakunoko has only been on the island for four months now and just getting in the swing of things. Just started off this it just a few months ago with, with the bows. His workload steadily is increasing. Seven matches coming in the last seven have been double-digit swing efforts for him. Film navigates and finds a ball to bury deep off the net. That's Keone Thim, senior from Honolulu. Yeah, smart hit by Thim on that one. A little off-speed shot. He comes with a lot of pedigree from a volleyball perspective in Thim. Grandfather, former UH head coach Mike Wilton. Programs all-time winning as coach, by the way. Thim will get it again. That is Evan Boyle in the cross court. Schellinger with two hands uses the block to his advantage. Oh, th there goes that, that trick again. I'm not really a fan of it, but hey, he got a kill on it, so it when, works. When you say you're not a fan of the trick, are oh. you saying shots with two hands? Yes, shots with two hands. I know it's kind of like a defensive tactic when your set's not there to use the block and maybe get another try um, for a side out again, but I feel like some players overuse it a little bit. Um, and it breaks up their momentum, which they should be attacking the ball. Hawaii has a lead now. Seven serving six, Guillermo Voss, AVCA all first teamer a season ago. That's Selcho all messed up there on the second contact. Two kills off of mishandled sequences in ball control from Hawaii and Selcho just feasting out of the middle. Yeah, little ball control issues on both sides of the net for sure. What do you think that's attributed to? Um, I think just getting it going. I feel like at the beginning of the match, it's kind of like getting in system, getting in rhythm. Um, yeah, just a little bit of nerves. You saw just moments ago our series history well in favor of Hawaii when you think of the all-time record between these two. Alakai Todd, the team's kill leader has a kill on that right side, and now he will get back ready to serve with his team in front by one once again. Yeah, he's got a lethal serve as well, so bombs away. Garrison! A Goliath in the middle! Could that galvanize this home squad after he gets a quick attack and rips it down? Yes. for his second kill. He's two of two. And great swing by Garrison. I'm not sure if I've ever hit, seen him hit a ball that hard. Nice swing. Finn hit it pretty hard, and they threw three blockers at him, and he was not underestimated in the sense he went right at it in daring fashion and come out on top. Yeah, Thim is not afraid of a block, not afraid to go into it and use it, tool off of it. Dried's already three service errors, so that's helped the Bows in large part as far as getting their points. And there's a service error the other side as that one goes long from Thim. And I almost said something really nice about Thim serving, <laughs> and maybe it's just because I thought it and then he missed, but he has a ridiculously fast serve as well. He absolutely does. We mentioned it this Bow team is so good with service pressure, and so good was that kill from Kurt Neuster, a redshirt sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana, 6'9". He can bring it. Yeah, and that's something they've definitely been working on. It's a little bit different when your setter is 6'8", setting a 6'8 middle. So that's something they've been working on and getting better at. Off the overplay, that's Akinoka who can't get it down. And Dyer now will send it across on a second contact. Dyer has options. A big try from Laura. <laughs> and he finds a way to disengage that block and win in what was probably not the most aesthetically pleasing. No, no of I points. honestly thought that was going to come back in his face, but he timed it and was able to swipe that block a little bit. Tritons have lost their last three matches. <laughs> Two blockers. Selcho. Leading the charge as Todd gets denied. Really good timing at the net by Shelcho and Schellinger on that one, waiting on Alakai Tide's hit. And 
pressing over the net at the right time. A double block they throw at Todd. They're going to throw a double block at Sakanoko, but because of how up-tempo the set was, he splits the block, finds a seam, and finds Pater. Absolutely. You took the words right out of my mouth. He's got a, such a fast arm swing, too. At 16 kills a match ago against UC Irvine, hit 375. Shred Rosenthal, he and Guillermo Voss. Only two to start every match this year for the Bows, and that's Rosenthal. And he's going to continue on from the service line as he goes right at that Triton backcourt and wins out with the ace. Now let's see if he serves the same spot again. How much mind games go into this yeah. right now from a server perspective and what he wants to do? Well, serving the libero is usually not something you do unless you want to pick on them for some reason. But it sounds like, or it looks like he's trying to go hard, or he's going into the deep court of his serve. That shot from Todd went into the deep court. It was a flat swing. Tritons, everybody seemingly looking at each other. Nobody really knew who was supposed to get that. Yeah, that's that's a setter communication there. Gabe's got to be more vocal about that. Off target with the serve. You mentioned in, in a lot of these serves are going to Evan Boyle, Big West All-Freshman team, wearing the blue uniform for the Tritons, the libero. He has gotten more than 200 more serves his way this season than the next highest person on the team. Yeah, well, he's taking up more of the court passing as well, um, definitely stepping into his own. Oh, that hurts. Oh, okay. Right in the ah. back of Gabe Dyer. Ouch. That is a wake-up call for Dyer, but that's the thing with, with Surfon. Sometimes it's beautiful when the power synergizes with yeah. his shot making, but sometimes you get... Just don't hit your setter. You, you get some misses that are out by quite a bit. That's a nice, look at that beautiful high toss. Oh, looks so effortless. Great serve by Sakanoko. Sakanoko has the Warriors. The Bows up by three at the media timeout. 15 to 12, opening frame. Series history, Hawaii has, to put it plainly, dominated. They won six of seven sets in the two meetings last year between those two teams. Both of those matchups were in Honolulu. And as mentioned, two years ago in five. Ooh, it was a, been exciting. Being there and being able to call oh, that one wow. was a blast. Kyle McCauley, who's oh, yeah. no longer on the team, had a huge night, had 19 kills. It was McCauley and Ryan Kaw. Oh, yeah. Dominating down the stretch. Both of those guys obviously have exhausted their eligibility. And the Warriors, the Bows, are leading by three, their largest margin, as they increase it even more. Sakanoku has a flamethrower back there. He does, and uh, let's also uh, note that he is from France, he's from Paris, and uh, they have a very good volleyball program over there as well. So he's gotten a lot of good reps in at a young age. Brad Rostrader, one point after the media timeout. Why just one point does he wait to then call the timeout? Um, his team just got aced, like hard, like untouched ace. So I think that's a, he's going to try to break up his momentum a little bit and try to get him to miss. Uh, but Sakanoko's uh, dialing that serve in pretty well. So somebody's got to get under that. It's been a 5-1 run right now for the Bows. We've had nine ties, but the ninth was at 11-all. The last six points, the service pressure has been lights out for the Bows. That's been the story. Yeah, and that's something that we're seeing so far right now. The Tritons are successful with their middles. Uh, Selcho and Garrison are both hitting over 600, um, but they have to be able to pass the ball well to be able to run them. Um, because if I was scouting the Tritons, you know, they, you know, set their outsides quite a bit and chirp on their pins. So they've been keying in on that, and that's why it's opened up for the middles a little bit. That is very well said. So 
We have had four lead changes, but now it's a four-point lead for the Bows. Their largest lead of this opening set. Sakanoko out of the timeout. Takes something off of it this time. Selcho is denied by Voss. Schellinger rips one. Scrambling and scoring and being thrifty when options were limited. Yeah, and a nice high hand hit, which is my favorite, going high hands, especially when you have three blockers in your face. Good timing for an off the net set by Schellinger. Out of bounds goes that serve from the Tritons. You look at their numbers, they are the most aced team in the Big West. Ooh, yeah. How did they not allow that, you know, although, albeit they've been aced quite a bit already, they've been aced four times in this first set, how do they not let that be a lingering theme into, say, sets at two and beyond that? Yeah, that's something for their coaches to figure out. <laughs> and they have to pass more balls. Um, you know, I think it's something, uh, the consistency, steadying out with who is passing back there, who is passing next to who and uh, taking more court and communicating back there as well. Lack of communication on that last ace. This is Kai Taylor coming in from off the bench. Trying to go wrist away down the line. Unsuccessful that one after it grazed the top of the twine. Side out percentage for Hawaii is near 80%. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. If I were to tell you that the Tritons have 14 points. You can't, too many service errors by the Tritons. I know they're trying to serve location and serve tough, but you cannot give Hawaii free points. A footfall there from Selcho. So 14 points for the Tritons. They've taken 14 swings. They're down by five, not a single hitting error because it's been the five aces that have been the determining factor here as Laura improvises and it backfires. Yeah, I gotta rethink that one. It was a little bit of a trap set, I think. But that's, I don't know, that, that was a tough one. Just a, a bad shot selection. A little bit of a trap set on that. But these are the small mental errors that you cannot make against a team like Hawaii. They will exploit them, take advantage of them, and serve that ball down your throat. You, as we mentioned, there's the five aces for the Bows, coupled with the seven service errors for the Tritons. That is 12 yeah. points. That's yeah. more than half of your points for the Bows just off the service line. Yeah, and, that, and you're not going to beat a team like Hawaii if those are your numbers against you. So I think that's why we're seeing so many timeouts. I think Rostrader is trying to get his team back into it, focus on little things, just that pass, the pass, the serve and pass, which is so essential. In La Jolla, Hawaii, 29-4 and all-time against UC San Diego. And it was that last meeting in... 2022. Here, where the Bows fell, they also lost to the Tritons in the Big West Conference Tournament in 2021. But since then, the Tritons have a new coach. They've hit the reset button. A bunch of new players. As Todd, out of the timeout, will go right at Schellinger. Sherfan, a blazing arm. And that is the one, I wouldn't even call it a, a weak link, but one potentially weak link in the front row for Hawaii is Keone Thim. He jumped super high. He's only six feet tall. And that one, I think we saw Cherfan hit that ball down the line on top of his head. So that is one thing. Oh. Wow. A two-person walk on the outside. And Cherfan takes responsibility. Yes, when he seals that line, he really seals it, and he did on that one. Great press into the court by Trifon. Sakanoko got neutralized. That's them with a roll shot. Block and revenge exacted as Laura got the first touch and the third 
Yeah. And then Oran into a wall on the perimeter. Yeah, and that covering of the block is, is a very important thing to do, especially if, against the big block of Hawaii on that right side. Here is Thim. He's got two kills on five swings. A laser beam at Boyle. Tight pass and Garrison. Not an easy play, but he is able to wipe it yes. off the block there of Neusterer, 6'9", middle blocker, both guys 6'9", both redshirt sophomores. Yeah, nice job by Garrison getting up on that one, being available. Neusterer finds a seam in the block as he rocks back and concocts the kill. Yeah, he did a nice job on that one as well. It's middle versus middle right now. Neusterer finding a little bit of a seam in that block off of Schellinger. Kevin Colling coming in. This is his 21st match played this year. Grad transfer. Was a four-year starter at Setter for Lewis University. Roll shot from Sherfan. A maestro for the off-speed stuff. And that fools and perplexes the Bows. You know what? I like that shot from Sherfan because he went in hard and then he changed it up last minute. So he got a little bit of a dug-in defense on the Hawaii side. Let me ask you this, because the the Bows have really nice reserves. Why don't you think we've seen a talent like Chaz Galloway out there right now? Um, I think that uh, right now, it, it's interesting, uh, talking to Coach Wade before the match, as he wasn't sure who he was going to play and was watching warm-ups and felt like they've been successful with Keone Thim. Obviously, Keone Thim offers a huge serve in the back row and so they're sticking with that for right now it's made a, a good difference so far in their favor this is rosenthal his father played in the nfl he did uh he and his mom i looked that up played at notre dame his mom played volleyball there Here's lindsay and da uh, dad mike uh played nine seasons the, for the giants and the vikings here's another fun fact rosenthal went to the same high school as Jim Garrison. Yeah, Rosenthal. Yeah, Rosenthal obviously a little bit younger, so they did not cross paths on the boys' varsity team. But I'm sure as the Tritons suffer their eighth service error that brings up five set points yeah. that both Rosenthal and Garrison know each other. Yep, Mira Costa, volleyball dynasty in Hermosa Beach, California. Sok Anoko already with three aces. A fourth would give them a one-set lead. Teeing it up for Sherfan. He's found an affinity <laughs> for the off-speed stuff, and the Bows don't have an answer right now for that. Yep, definitely changing up his game, mixing in some shots. He's got a team high, four kills. That's one more than Jim Garrison. So one set point is saved. Can the Tritons save another one? Sakanoko is going to make sure that that doesn't happen. And after there were 10 ties, the last one being at 11 apiece, service pressure has the Bows taking the first set. While the University of Hawaii men's volleyball team cannot mathematically be the regular season champ of the Big West, women's water polo did just that. Shout out to them as they are the Big West regular season champions. For Kirsten Olsen, I'm Brian Fenley. That first set going to the Bows, 25 to 20. 14 points were decided by the serve. Yes. Five aces for UH and nine, count it, nine service errors for the home squad. Yeah, that's like giving them nine free points. Uh, we know their side out percentage, over 80%. You can't give them a lollipop, but all together missing serves, uh, that many, um, you know, it's going to be tough to, to beat a team like Hawaii when, when those are the numbers you're putting up. There were 10 ties in the first set. The last one was at 11 all. And then that is where, as we've talked about in length, that's where the aces seemingly compounding one after another for UH. And the Tritons were left at times speechless in serve receive. Yeah, because they didn't hit terrible. They hit 500 as a team with 13 kills. Um, Hawaii had nine kills, hitting over 300. 
but serving, and that name of that game and that first set was all serving. The one bright spot for the Tritons has to be the play of Anthony Scherfan. I'm surprised yeah. that he's gotten more than one kill off the off-speed stuff because usually at this level, you're not going to get a lot of kills that way. He's got two kills by way of the change of pace. Yeah, and I think he's selling it better. Um, he's going in hard and then making a change last minute to hit that shot. Another great serve by Keone Thim. Them going hard and it's unchanged. The service pressure continues to be amplified for one of the nation's best teams. Yeah, he's just teeing off back there. Them just two aces over his last four matches. Garrison is popped up. One and up there from Choi to prolong this point. Set was high in there for Scherfan. And a free ball coming over into zone five for Boyle. Garrison, a transition swing. Scherfan ah. goes combo. As Garrison jumps as the phantom attacker. Five of eight now is Anthony Scherfan. Air free volleyball. Yeah, I like that play. Scherfan on a faster set at outside. And nice job by Garrison drawing the blocker on that one. So Scherfan had a little more room to work with. Scherfan has been the most consistent attacker. And there goes <laughs> Rosenthal. The deception on two. When you're 6'8 and you're 17 years old, why not get a little adventurous offensively? Yeah, why not? He's up there already. Uh, like the aggressiveness of Rosenthal. And by the way, Miracosta, Manhattan Beach, not Hermosa Beach. My bad. Uh, Hermosa Beach is right down the, down the way. Down hard. <laughs> Sakanoko. He has been active and is impacting this match in so many ways. His arm is so fast. It's, it's a, a pleasure to watch him hit. This is a match where he has surpassed over 300 swings on the season. Neusterer serving. Passes tight. And it's sent over by Boyle. That set nope. was in discord. Sure fun. Tees off. But too wide on that right-sided attack that had the crowd hoping. The pro Triton crowd hoping that that one would find the floor. And that one, he went for the money shot down the line. I believe there was a hole in the block on that one. Decided to go hard line. 3 0 scoring run for the Bows after Scherfan's first hitting error. It's the team's third, and of course, they're first in the second set. Oh, Foss turns and fires, and a furious put down as he made that happen quickly at the point of attack. Yeah, the nonchalant cut back hard angle. I don't even know what that was, but it happened so fast I almost missed it. Just six points in, and Brad Rostrad of the Tritons head coach is going to use the timeout. It's a 4-0 scoring run. This is a second set much different to the start of what the first set looked like. How do the Tritons work their way back into the second set? We discuss when we come back. One of the biggest turnouts for fans we've had all season long. UH and their fans, they travel very well. They've got one fine program and many here on site are happy the way this one has started for them. Winning the first set 25 to 20. And the same as this end of the first set playing out in the early parts of the second set, Kirsten. It's getting Louis Sakanako chances to score. Sakanoko, excuse me, and then the service aces. Oh yes, which we're seeing. Did we say service aces? <laughs> Yeah, I think everyone on the team of Hawaii's team right now has a service ace. Well, there's the disparity right there. Seven for the for the Bows, and we're going to reset here off the top of the show. That's what I mentioned. <laughs> I said this Serving. is going yes, to come down yeah. to the aces here. 
when you've got a UH team that is tops in the nation at 2.08 aces per season, they've already got seven. And that is number seven in Matt Lim coming in off the bench for Schellinger. Nurster the touch after the shot from the Tritons. Oh, back row. Yeah, over, over the 10-foot line by Thim on that one. The Bows, when they are dictating in the sense of bringing the pressure, they're nearly unstoppable. Mm -hmm. But there is some vulnerability when they are put out of system. Oh, wow. Yes, they are. Um, that was something that Spiros Chakakas was so good at, is hitting that high ball, being creative. Um, they don't have the same termination uh, efficiency um, on the high ball without him there. So that's something that they are a little bit vulnerable. A 1v1 in Matt Lim was vulnerable. Two hands up <laughs> trying to go up against Voss. Advantage Voss, the 6'7 senior from Brazil who's hitting 545 on the year. Yeah, he gets up quick and has such an array of angles that he can hit. There have been seven Big West matches for Boss where he has hit 300 or better in a match. Selcho has an answer. His first kill in the second set and his third in the match. He is three of five. He's hitting 600. The See? middles are doing well, but yep. they're just not getting enough attackable sets. No, they're not. And I feel like only Jim Garrison got some really good, clean uh, kills in the first set. Garrison and Selcho, the starting middles for the Tritons, are both three of five. Six kills, ten swings, no errors from the Triton oh. middles. <laughs> There's an error as they throw an armada out there to shut down Lim. Yeah, th there, was, there was no getting through that block. That was, that was a tough one. Dialing up the rejection, a pair of bows. Hawaii, known for their service pressure, but goodness, do they bring it oh, in yep, the blocking department. Sakanoko, the one blip. Yep, just a little bit of a foot fault on that one. So with the... The seven service aces for the Bows, Tritons only have two. They are within three. Rosenthal goes behind his head to Todd. And those two work in synergy as Rosenthal picks up his 11th assist. And there was yeah. some serious psyching out there on that right side. Yes, definitely got faked out. Nice swing by Todd on that one. You mentioned this, the, the Tritons just two aces. They had two aces in a five-setter that they lost last Friday at UC Santa Barbara. More of that is what the Tritons are hoping for, a heavy dose of Anthony Scherfan, who brings himself to a six kill. A nice swing by Scherfan, being aggressive, hitting high and hard. That is Thim upstages that Triton block. What can they do, particularly Kirsten, Triton blocking when the bows are out of system? Uh, they need to wait on that. It looked like they were a little bit early and didn't press at the right time, and that's why Keone Thim was able to get that ball through. There were four lead changes and ten ties in the first set. One tie. No lead changes. Everything has gone the Bows' direction as Todd, with a four-point lead, serves at limb. That is number four, <laughs> Laura. Film <laughs> off of the foot. That counts, but yeah. just sent that one too long. He's trying to set with his feet. Great reaction, though. Hawaii last week, they split. Two matches at UC Irvine. Fell to UC Irvine on that Friday a week ago for the first time since 2018. They had had the Anteaters number since. What did you think of that right there? Uh, it was, yeah, I mean, 
Trifon really went for that one. Um, Evan Boyle having a hard time handling this heat back there. Man. What adjustment could he make then? Um, you know, he's pretty dug in. I mean, it's just a reactionary thing. Um, <laughs> Thim got the clearance from Dan Willis, our first referee, allowing Thim to serve. And oh, ace wow. as they are pinpointing those serves and picking on Boyle. That is an eighth service ace. That's one away from 200 on the season for UH. Yeah, Hawaii's doing a good job of exposing uh, the passing weaknesses right now. Really going for it. An ace, and then follows suit with a service air. I mean, we're, we're talking about several servers who are serving 70 miles an hour. I mean, this isn't, when you're talking about good serving, like it's, that's, this is next level, this is elite. Five different UH players have served and had at least one ace as Laura came into this match with two aces and 18 service errors. What he did right there is not going to help that ratio in no. the slightest bit. No, it, it gives them another opportunity to serve, which they've been crushing right now. Kai Taylor back in. He crushed a serve in the first set that led to an ace. UH, 2.5 total team blocks to the Tritons, two. Blocked is Sherfan. That is his 11th swing. Takes a 12. Yes. Goes high hands. And he's got a match high seven kills. That's two more than Todd, who is the highest in kills for the Bows. And I love that hit from Churfin. Going high hands. He jumps so high and hits so hard. Great kill by him. UH only one hitting air in the second set. Out of system here. Saka, no go. Oh. Got posterized. Multiple blockers encompassing the shot. And he got that shot squelched. And that was a great timing at the net by Lim, Selcho, and Cherfan, all helping out on that one. Now the lead in total blocks. We we're just talking about that favors the Tritons here. But Todd goes hard. And that one is non-returnable for Todd, who is six of seven, one hitting air. Yeah, You've got. Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt yourself. I was going to say. No. Go ahead. The the sets very diversified oh, for yeah. the bows. They've got three different guys with seven attacks. Yes. They uh, uh, Rosenthal does a great job spreading the offense around, getting all his very talented hitters involved. So as long as as long as Hawaii can pass well. They have a, an array of hitters that they can go to in the front row and in the back row. Well, the team's kill leader for UH, and, and Todd is living up to all the hype. He's had 12 kills in each of the last three matches. He's got six, so he's halfway there, and we're about halfway or so through the second set. When you're down by this margin and you lost the first set, is there a temptation like Sherfan to go for a little bit more than you normally would from the service line? Yeah, well, I think there is a balance. You've got to have some guys that should go for it and then some that should do more placement serves, which is something that I know is their strategy in going into the match of serving locations. Thim and Todd ran into each other on a solo mission. It's Todd. <laughs> And he stuffs that one. And the Bow faithful are loving what they're seeing. Yep, even on a broken play by himself, Voss didn't even make it out to close the block on that one. It's a great block by Alakai Todd. That is his first solo block in nine matches, by the way. Sakanoko unsuccessful this time. Yep, tried to mix it up. Tritons called their first timeout of the second set. Six points in when they trailed by four. 
5-1. They still trail by four. Now 28 points in as Thim throttles one that isn't coming back. That yep, Hawaii is definitely, even on those not great passes, transitioning on those high balls, which is something that they've been struggling with. UH did win this opening set, by the way, 25 to 20. They came into this match dropping the opening set in five of their eight Big West matches this season. That's Thim, he is denied by Dyer. They go back to him on a high ball and the joust wiped off the hands. Prompt to the point of attack is Thim and he out leaps that pair of Tritons. <laughs> He's such a smart hitter too, knew exactly how to swipe it off that big block and get out of the way. Kevin Cole, our down official, just spoke with Brad Rostratter, who seems to refute the call and what it was. We're gonna take a look at this again and see what they are yeah, potentially discussing here. Our first challenge of the match, forthcoming from Lion Tree Arena. It looked pretty clean to me. They are challenging. Yeah. It, it, it looked pretty clean to me, right? I think that he swiped it off the block. It went off the block and out of bounds. But, uh, you know, maybe also a momentum uh, breaker for Ross Strader to call a timeout because uh, it looks like Kevin Calling back there is just getting in, in rhythm serving. Kevin Calling is serving. Kevin Cole said there's going to be no change yeah. to that point, our down official. Not surprised. Lead of six. That's 18 serving 12. Selcho batters that one through the Neusta store. Thim, Neusta, excuse me, Thim block. Was it the speed that gave him the leg up there in the high tempo set? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, I think Hawaii's camping a little bit on the outside hitters, and I think they just found them a little bit, uh, not out of system, but just not block fully established. Not able to establish that serve in was Peter Selcho. By the way, obviously we're looking forward to, to next week. UH is going to be hosting the Big West Championships. I wish we could go to that. I wish. I'll be in Hawaii next week. I'll be in Kauai. You'll be in Kauai. I'll be playing in the Dino Tournament. I was in Honolulu for the Big West Beach Volleyball Championships last year. That oh, was such yeah. a blast to be a part of that in the conference. Any excuse to go to Hawaii is good. <laughs> Let's be real. Yes. 20 to 13, Tritons down, and they're going to use their second and final timeout of set two. They've won two conference matches at home. Mm -hmm. UC Santa Barbara, and the other one was against CSUN. Yes. They put up a fight they did. in one of the sets against Long Beach State here. They did. Should have won oh, that, first that set. set. Yep. Should have won that. They had a set point. So there are moments of greatness. There are. It's just trying to patch it all together for a very young team. You're looking right there at three Tritons, Sherfon, Garrison, and Laura. None of them are seniors. No. Yeah. And the Tritons, I, I, I feel the same way as that they have do have moments of greatness. But it is now keeping that momentum going and, and making that greatness like all the time great. Um, and that's something I think they're trying to figure out. Um, just being a little bit more consistent and then also serving wise. I feel like there's only been a handful of times where I've seen them all on serving. Um, but somebody's going to have a good serving night and missing all your serves uh, is not going to help you beat the number five team in the nation in Hawaii. 12 service errors for the Tritons. And two aces for UC San Diego. Six times as many service mistakes and a seven point lead for Hawaii, their largest of set number two. A far cry from what we saw in the first set where there were 10 ties over the first 22 points of the first frame, only for the Bows to open things up with some big serving and aces down the stretch in the first. A bump set from Todd looking for Thim. 
An out of system swing and kill. They threw multiple blockers at him and he just got, went right at it and knew with a determined like swing. Yep, and you know what? He is proving me wrong. I said that they're out of system, eyeballs are, are no more, and he has gotten a kill at least on the last two or three. Thim is tied for a team high. Six kills with our server in Todd, who doesn't have an ace yet. There are five bows who have at least one ace. Sherfon has an ace. He's also got a kill. Up to eight now on a 14th swing, and that cuts the gap to seven again. And I think the more they can run fast sets to him, the better. He's got, he's really broadened his array of shots um, and court vision. Dryden's hit over 500 in the first set as Garrison right there with Laura, and they team up on the riveting rejection. Yeah, Garrison doing a nice job at the net tonight blocking, really. Good timing, good job closing the block and pressing. Rosenthal will oh. go right to Todd. And off of Todd's seventh kill, Rosenthal has his 16th assist. He's got 16 of his team's 20 helpers. So Hawaii's offense, I was going to say, they can just go to anyone at their team at any given time. Which, Unbelievable. which makes it so hard yeah, when you've got bent. blocking mismatches, you've got yep. one-on-ones, there's no drop-off no matter where these sets are going. And the one thing that they've done a really good job of is not getting in their own way as of late. Now, sure, Thim with the service mistake, and that is the team's seventh. Yeah. But beyond that, just six hitting errors in the match. Uh. Sakanoko is dug by Dyer. Left off for Lim. Oh. Newster read it, and he read Lim's mind to send that one back. That's like 14 feet of block over there. <laughs> I mean, that's a hard one to get through, especially with one of those little set-over shots. New uh, I think he was a little bit trapped on that one, so. That he was. Let's give him that. Newster Err, as he serves, had a 10-block match against UC Santa Barbara. He's got an ace, his second, and the team's ninth. Yeah, that puts insane. them wow. at exactly 200 aces on the year. Wow, that's impressive. Most in the Big West. Yeah, and coming from everybody on their team. It's not just from one player. Only fitting that the 200th gives them an abundance of set points. Eight to be exact. Rosenthal will go back set to Todd, up from Laura, diving along the back line. Thim trying, excuse me, that would be the Tritons on the left side and Matt Lim, not Thim, but Lim. 25 to 16. Tritons down two sets to none, trying to avoid the sweep. be the last week of Triton sporting events played in Lion Tree Arena for this calendar year, this academic year that is, but as we go to our Athletes of the Week, some of the sports that are outdoors are still going on and will go on for a few weeks. On the men's side, you've got baseballs, Brock Glitz. Right now, the Tritons are playing the number 12 team in the country, UC Irvine winning 14 to one in the sixth inning. And then on the ladies' end, track and field, Kate McNaughton has done great work in that department for the Tritons. Hawaii in men's volleyball has done great work in aces, in putting the pressure on. They have six different attackers who have scored at least one kill. It's diverse and it's hard to stop. Yeah, it is. Uh, Jim Garrison doing a good job in the middle there. Nice job by Celso and Schlesinger at the net blocking, but Hawaii, and a nice job by Celso there too, but Hawaii has been on that triple block there. Pretty hard to stop. And Sakanako has been so good as well. Such a liquid arm. Chirfan been hitting pretty well too. Um, they're gonna need a lot more from of that from him if they're gonna give Hawaii a run for their money though. 
this is where you really get to see the difference, and it's the hitting percentage, but, but the aces. The aces. It, and it's not just the aces, Kirsten, it's also the service errors, and yes. they have been a plenty for the Tritons. Double digits with 12. Yes, and UCSD is not hitting bad. Um, they're just not serving well. And if you can't serve and if you can't pass, it's hard to get your offense going. And Hawaii has been unstoppable behind the service line. Which brings us back to what we said at the beginning of this broadcast. Yeah. When I pointed out, I felt like the service pressure and the aces from the bows would create trivial matters in trying to return these and cause chaos on the Tritons end. The pass was going to be the prerogative. And how can they dial that in? I know we've talked about this yeah. a little bit, but I'm looking at Evan Boyle. Yeah, this Evan. Guy, this guy was first. He was on the freshman all-conference team with the Big West a season ago. He's a lot better player than he's showing us tonight. Yeah, he is. And he's getting picked on a lot. Um, I think it's something about refocusing, knowing that ball is coming to you. It's going to come at you fast. It's going to come at you from several different players. Neuster serving well, Sakunoko as well as um, who else has been? Oh, Keone Thim as well, serving really tough tonight and picking on him. So he's got to step it up. That he does. Strides right now are fourth in the Big West standings. UH is in that third position. They need one win among these next two, in these final two regular season matches for them to officially clinch the three seed in the Big West Championship Tournament. Hawaii cannot finish any higher than that. UC Irvine in the two spot. They own the tiebreaker over UH. So when we do have the conference tournament next week in Honolulu, the two top seeds get buys in that first round. Hawaii is going to have to play in the quarterfinal. So they're going to have to start from the first round and try to work their way through the tournament, which brings up something I'd love to talk about in this third set, Kirsten, is you start to think about NCAA tournament, eight teams make it at large bids. Hawaii tries, what do they need to do to make that happen? Um, well, I think they have to do what they're doing. They have to serve tough and pass well and get give Tred Rosenthal the opportunity to get all his hitters going, which I think they're doing a great job about that tonight. Really in the zone, probably gearing up for that. Not looking past UC San Diego, but really focusing on playing together as a team. Rosenthal fighting Neusterer in stride and a jackhammer, sledgehammer finish for the redshirt sophomore. He is three of three. And it's hard to believe, but at the beginning of the season, Coach Wade told me they were averaging about seven errors, um, and then they had gotten up to 11 errors, but now they're back down to about nine errors um, collectively as a team, which is something that they've been focusing on, really being more efficient. Tritons have had, as we've been talking about, eight hitting errors over the course of this match. They had a hitting percentage of over 500 in the first set. That has dipped significantly since. Sherfon trying to bolster it again as he wields a live arm and executes his ninth kill on a team high 15 swings. That is a live and a very heavy arm. Love seeing them get that ball to him quickly. Tritons fell behind 5-1, early goings of the second set. They're up 4-1. Sakanoko <laughs> got denied, and Garrison was up there saying no. Garrison and Trifon together. Oh, that was all Trifon on that one. A little bit of a little bit of a stare down. Be careful. He'll put that back in your face pretty easily. Yeah, players don't forget those things. They will use it in sort of a karma-like situation later on in the match if they can. By the way, Schellinger is back in for Matt Lim, who came in for him. They bring Schellinger back in, and it is an active third start in this third set, excuse me, for Scherfon, a 4-0 scoring one. So I just mentioned this. It was 5-1 Bows in the second. It's 5-1 Tritons in the third. Yeah, and there you go. A little momentum shift going the Tritons way. Good serve from Laura. Nursterer off a block touch from the Tritons. A pipe attack from Laura. 
A deep oh. ball from Todd. God. Slick as he scores and finds some open court. Uh, what a beautiful play by Todd on that one. Saw a little bit of a cluster on the left side of the court and just found the line. Great shot. That eighth kill from Todd, that ends a 4-0 Triton run. Their largest run in any one of these three sets. Nurster goes right back to Boyle, has over 500 receptions on the year. Off kilter on the set. Todd had to readjust, hitting from off the court, and that's not his best effort, and it's not really his fault. No, not a great set, but in that first play, great dig by Todd, uh, Todd on that. Todd has had such an immense impact on this team. He had just two starts, played nine matches a season ago. He's had to be patient, but patience is paying off for him, and he's a key contributor. Yeah, absolutely. So is Sherfon. <laughs> Teeing off on the top of that block. Wow. Great high hard swing. And look at that set three hitting percentage. San Diego taking off on that. Hitting 500. That they are. No hitting errors for the Tritons in this third set. Two already for the Bows. That's not going to be a third as Louis Sakanoko answers, averaging 2.15 kills per set. Now Louis just a freshman, but already such a big presence at the net. Rosenthal, a big presence, 17-year-old, 6'8 setter, serving, <laughs> not going to be serving for long. A mega finish from Selcho as his shot supersedes anything the Bows had on the other end. Don't sleep on the Triton middles. They will take advantage of any little gaps you give them in the block. Nice job by Selcho. Speaking of the Triton middles, of Selcho and Garrison, the starters, they are a combined 8 of 14, barren of hitting errors. Not a single one, but there's an error in another form. Oh, and those errors. have been costly. Yes. 13 for the Tritons, the first, though, in set three. Yep, and I thought that the strategy was, after talking to Brad Rostratter, is to serve some locations, um, but I don't, I don't know if that's working. <laughs> Sakanoko serve has been working, oh. and Todd can't engineer the solo block. He had a solo block in the second set, but could not get it done that time. And there goes Charlie Wade busting out the green card. Says, wait a minute, I saw it differently. And Kevin Cole is going to go to the monitor for our match's second challenge. And and can I can I get a, a call out to Evan Boyle on that pass, though? I mean, he's definitely stepping up his game. I think you heard us talking about him. Still definitely making some good moves passing-wise. And it looks like Schellinger uh, Used Alakai Todd on that. I think that he's asked, thinking that he touched it on the way out. Not sure about that. I don't think I saw that. We haven't had a challenge overturn yet. No. So they have stood as is. Mm -hmm. And even as we figure out what they're looking at, I, I, no, I, don't, I don't think it got him. Maybe if he had long hair, but then hair doesn't count, so. But here's the thing. So you're saying it didn't get him on the way no. the ball was going down. Right. No, I don't think so. But did that ball, when it was going down, did it clip the sideline? Oh, uh, no, I thought the ball was out. I was thinking that it was a touch. But they're saying maybe it was in. Well, we're going to get okay, the maybe. official call here from Kevin Cole. Oh, ball's in. That's what All I right. thought. I, I okay. when, when looking in our... Our incredible production team yeah, in the control the room, thing. they gave Whoops. us another angle, and I looked at it and I thought to myself, wait a minute. It looked like Todd might have blocked that and kept it in bounds, which he did. That is his second solo block. Yeah. He's had two. Yeah, I thought it touched him on the way out, so I was wrong. What is Brad Rostratter, the Tritons head coach, trying to add to the conversation? What could he be trying to say? I think he's trying to butter up the ref to give him a call <laughs> maybe on the next one. Sock Anoko. 
He's got three aces, but a blip that time. Both teams double-digit service errors now. That's number 10 for the visitors, as you see on your screen. Oh, yeah. It's almost a whole set. Choi, the reception. Oh. Sancho! Look at this. Oh. Things are getting really testy. Voss got denied, and he had something mean to say to Selcho. This is great sportsmanship, though, oh, right love there. That. I, I was love gonna say, that. Selcho doesn't say anything. Misunderstanding. Selcho's. Voss was fired up for just a few seconds there. Yeah. Had a few things to say. Full of vitriol. Good to see everybody getting back oh, to playing as them off a pogo stick yep. skyscrapes and cuts it to four. Yep, can't leave a gap in a block on Keone Thim. Selcha got a little psyched out on that one. What is his vertical leap? 5,000. <laughs> Outside this world, yes. It's intergalactic <laughs> is what it is. I love that. You're absolutely right. Pancake up from Todd, oh. but it's going to be out anyway. So Gabe Dyer, that's the first time he's gone with the dump. And it caught the Bows, the fifth team ranked in the country, the number five team in the country by surprise. Yep, he d that's the first time he's done that tonight. <laughs> the problem is the dumps, there's not a lot of pace off of that, right? So there are opportunities for the Bows to get underneath some of those. Garrison Harrison. jumping right in front of that shot from Nursterer and sending it backwards with N conviction. And nice job by the middles, both Garrison and Selcho blocking at the net, really frustrating the Hawaii offense. Yeah, it's been very frustrating this third set for them. They fell behind 5-1, and now they're down six. Timeout on the floor, Triton's out to a sizzling. Only three graduating Tritons. And they will be honored senior night is tomorrow. That's head coach Brad Rostratter, who has a very young team. And they are showing out and putting up a really nice source of resistance, Kirsten, they in are. the third set. Yeah, it's almost like a rebranding of their team right now. They're coming in with a lot of fire. Selcho likes to bring the fire from the service line. He does just that, goes right at Choi. Todd a 14 swing, Selcho getting underneath it. A diving layout save from Choi. Up for Todd! Oh. Two blockers! Wow. Mincing and denying the senior. That's a really good timing at the net there by both Laura and Garrison. Running into a blocking buzzsaw was Todd, who has four of his team's 11 hitting errors as Selcho can't keep it along, Stinton at the service line, netting one and sending it short. When these two teams played last year, the two matches both were at Honolulu, in Honolulu. The Bows won six of seven sets. So the Tritons did get one set out of them, and they're trying to do it here in the first of two meetings. The second one will be tomorrow here, 7 o'clock local time here on the Pacific Coast. And Todd serve has the Tritons doubling up the yeah. fifth-ranked team in the I, country. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, this is, uh, I haven't seen the, the Bows make this many errors before. Instead of an air, getting high up in the air was Thim. And it is just a sight to behold what that man can do. To add to what he's done, he's got two aces, three digs, hitting a balmy 400. He and Nursterer are both hitting 400. Okay, they're gonna challenge? Yeah, challenge the touch. I was trying Challenge. to watch that conversation over there. Um, 
we can we rewatch it again, I'll be able to tell what was happening. <laughs> but um, Rostrader gestured to his forehead. I don't know if that was a signal to say what, did something hit the head. Yeah, maybe it was another situation where off of the block, maybe it hit Keone Thim on the way out. Um, I don't know. So he touches it. Oh, so he's saying no touch. So Churfun did not touch it. I mean, it, I think it went under his armpit, but uh, hmm, interesting. This is when we ha wish we had that Bolt 6 camera, though, right? Well, that's the future. <laughs> Eventually. NCAA, get it together. I know. We need that. The NCAA is going to get there. Saves time. Obviously, you know, I like to, you know, call tennis, and they've got Hawkeye, which yeah, obviously is yeah. a, another wonderful tool to speeding up this process. Yeah, I don't need line judges. And so. leaving no doubt. I don't know. Trifon seemed very... Demonstrative to say that he didn't think he touched it. Didn't think he touched it, and then Keone Thim under the net, but I think the ball was already down. So, okay. No touch. What a great call to challenge Brad Rostrader. So cerebral. Yes, Tom Poole collected over there, too. Gets the point right back, takes it away from the Bows. Dyer serves away. A laser beam off of Dyer. Oh. Underneath for the pancake. Two handed over by Schellinger. And touched over by Rosenthal. Combination play up in the air from Todd. Back to Laura. Run Boyle, the, quick, the offensive the rebound. Down with two quick, hands, quick, quick. up from Todd again. Scherfon shooting it down the line. Fim for the point. Uh, Scrapes it off the block and wins. A heart pumping, eventful. So Scherfon, Scherfon made a hitting error there. He should have hit that ball hard down the line, not gone soft down the line. With yeah, with Keone Thim up, that was a hitting mistake. But what great rally! A crescendo to that billowing and rolling and drama-like point, but there's not a whole lot of drama in the form of an errant serve from Thin as he gives a freebie right back to the opposition. Sebastian Laura, three kills, eight swings. And does oh, he have his first ace? He does as the 6'8 Rosenthal slides into second base right? or something like that into the scores Jeez. table. Great to see he's okay. Tried to bicycle kick that. It goes all out. There's a little bit of padding at the bottom of yes. the scores table, so I'm sure that yeah. was very helpful to make sure he was okay. Yeah. Laura goes at Sakanoko on a combo play. Can't get it uh, to steer in. And look yeah. at what we have here. A San Diegan back in San Diego on the court. Chaz Galloway seeing his first action of the night. Graduated from Del Norte High School, which is just 16 miles from this campus at UC San Diego. Laura, cross court set with two hands. Schellinger misfires. And you could see the very educated volleyball <laughs> fan said, yeah. I don't know about that set yeah, from Laura. Yeah, that was, that was very doubly. <laughs> I like how you use that so as like an adjective. Some chowder on it. Nine for the Warriors, the Bows, as they serve it to the Triton side of the net. Schellinger, that's off the Voss block. I'll try the right oh, side. Oh, wow. A little cutty. Lots of chop. That's a great cut shot. Goes down on the beach, too. Lots of action on that. Look at that. Yeah, that was just a great shot by Scherfen on that one. 
Sheriff on 12 kills. And the Tritons lead by 10. I can't even believe you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> what a difference. Tritons won the first five of six points of this third set, and they haven't looked back since. Rosenthal playing uh. up over the net. There's a joust. Dyer looking to Schellinger. Film play center field to pop it up. That's Todd looking for a ninth kill. It's not coming. <laughs> Runs into a blocking behemoth. Wow, what a rally, though. Oh, my goodness. A blocking Viceroy is Voss as he's got the final say of that point with the help of Chaz Galloway. They're collaborating on the stop. I feel like Voss knew they were going to set the pick on that, and he was just camping on it. 19 assists for Rosenthal, our server. In the double digits, even further, the service errors for the Bows. That's 13. That's one fewer oh. than the home team. I think they heard us talking about their serving. <laughs> UH, they've won the last three meetings against the Tritons. But it's something I could also see the Bows turn around and serve nine aces in a row, too. So. Watch out. Charlie Wade, a stoic look on his face, seeing that his team has themselves a bit of adversity here to deal with in the third set. Dyer sets up oh. Selcho, and Foss is omnipotent everywhere. Yeah, he's like a silent assassin up there. So smart at the net. But is he silent when he's got a flair <laughs> for the smack talk that we saw earlier? Yeah, he just In wanted to make sure people weren't saying stuff to him and clearly weren't. Galloway, that's, it's got to be hard. You don't play the first yeah. two sets and then the ball toss nearly scrapes the, the ceiling, yep. the timing, and you're just, you haven't played a lot in this match. Schellinger back in. He was replaced by Matt Lim and then Lim struggled so they brought Schellinger back in. Finn wow. is going to miss with his 17th attack. That's going to take him under 300 as far as hitting percentage. So I feel like the difference we're seeing in Hawaii here, other than the missed serves, is the hitting errors, which is something that is uncharacteristic of them. They have, and speaking of a service error, that one from Schellinger, but more than half of their hitting errors in the entirety of the match for the Bows have come in this third set. Eight of the 14 hitting errors are courtesy of some of their misdeeds in the third frame. As Calling is back out there to serve. Sherfon mistimes the jump. He mistimed it, and that took the bows out of rhythm as well. Yeah, that took everybody out of rhythm, even him. But also, honestly, a really good mislocation. It was like a jumbo shrimp in the corner <laughs> beach shot. It definitely had that sort of feeling. And look, he had a, to take a beach volleyball term. He had the cutty. Yeah, so. I know. I think he's playing some beach. Well, I think a lot of these guys could go pro at the beach at the oh, next level. 6-4 oh. with a high highlight-like finish at the net for Laura. And a surplus of set points to force a fourth frame. Peter Selcho. And Laura just throwing that ball down on the directional block. Literally. A two-hand finish for him. Choi the reception. Master pounds that one into the net. That last point was the story. The attacking errors, pervasive and contagious for the Bows. They had nine in the third set. And an extra indulgence of optimism now overtakes the Tritons fans as we go to a four set. The University of Hawaii might have already had their senior night, but they're going to be back hosting the Big West Men's Volleyball Championships. That's next week, April 18th through the 20th. 
Kanoa Lei and the rest of the broadcast team, they do an incredible job. Always love watching their calls on Spectrum. And we will be watching for the Tritons. The best they can do is, out of the six Big West teams, finish fourth. The best that the Bows can do is finish third. And because the top two seeds get the bye, it's going to take three wins for the Bows to win the Big West Tournament at home, which they might have to do. When you think about there's two at-large bids, what could happen in the MPSF? What about UC Irvine? We're talking to one of the great guys in this industry, in, in Tiff Wells, who does radio, yeah. and breaking it down, the scenarios for UH. Do they need to win out to officially get into the NCAA Tournament, or do they have enough of a resume to make an at-large, but if they don't win next week's Big West tournament, there's a lot of discussion. Yeah, lots of parity, lots of parity. Uh, a lot of really good teams that have had their ups and downs this year that could win any given night. So, but this is crunch time. This is the end of the season. Then this, this is when it matters. Um, but what team can gel and play at their highest level at the end of the season? Nine attacking errors in that third set for the Bows. Oh, yeah. Nine of their 15 came in that third frame. A big reason why they dropped that third set. 25 to 12, all Tritons in the third and hitting in the negative as we were talking about as well. UH attacking in the third set by itself. Rosenthal to get us started in the fourth set. Tritons trailing two sets to one. Voss, a nifty little finish from Rosenthal, who ran right up to the net after the serve and picked up his 20th assist. Yeah, he sure doesn't move like he's 6'8". <laughs> he's everywhere. Well, when you have the pedigree, when yeah. your, your father played in the NFL. And mom, a volleyball player. Mom, a very decorated volleyball player. Yeah, he's got it in his blood. He's just an athlete. Just 17 years old. There's so much potential in his game, but as service air takes it to a 15th for the Bows. Each team has 15 service miscues. Sakanoko receives the dire serve. That's Foss's second swing in the four set. High ball to the right side for Sakanoko. Sure fun, blocked. Joust, Laura outleaps Sakanoko, who then cleverly dekes it past the Tritons. Rosenthal, wow. the hustle, the, the scrambling, hustle. and made it work. Yeah, but no more dinks, guys. Come on. <laughs> Look at Rosenthal, 6 8, laying out like that. None of that's possible without him. No, no, absolutely. He set it up on a T for Louie. Speaking of Louis, here he is, Sakanoko, 6'5", freshman from France. Scherfan is dug by Rosenthal. Choi looking for Todd. Takes it right at the block, and that's a ninth kill on a 20th swing. And Choi has his first assist as he had to come in in an out-of-system situation. Yeah, a nice high swing by Todd on that one. UH winning three of the first four points of this fourth set. A win tonight for UH, and they would clinch the third seed in next week's Big West Conference Tournament. Sherfan has other plans as he draws up a kill, turning a ball down the line for a 14th kill. That's three off of his season high. Yep, he's really hitting really smart tonight. I like the decisions he's making. Had 37 swings last Friday against University of California, Santa Barbara. And that set was out of the orbit mm, around yep. Sherfon, and he didn't even attempt to go up for it. It was so out of yeah, his mean, area code. I didn't even see it because uh, Dan Willis was in the way, but... Uh, Looked like it was more for Dan. <laughs> Just too far outside. Jump float from Voss to Schellinger. Loads up on the kill. 
Several hitting errors from the Tritons. They've got to dial that back in. Yeah, loads up on the swing looking for the kill, I should say. And yeah, he does have a love affair for going high hands. Yeah, he does. But he's got to find him on, on his way up there. There we go. A blister shot from Sherfon. Scooches the Tritons to within two. After a 15th kill, only one on either team who has double-digit kills. And a nice swing by Churfun, seeing CUNY Thim there, seeing a little bit of a mismatch. Todd from Rosenthal, that one a bit botched, but it does cross the net. Schellinger a pound down the line on a, what looked like a shoot set, something yeah. low driving, and he is able to atone for his prior attacking error sins earlier in the set. Yes, high risk, big reward there, going for that line. Couple of consecutive points strung out here for the Tritons, trying to put an end to a three-match losing streak, and that block just went out, redirected out of play. Bows get back on the board with their sixth point. I wonder if we're going to see Hawaii heat up their serving again like they did in those first two sets. That was the story. They got away from that in set number three. And Selcho has been nearly immaculate. Six of ten, one hitting error as he turns and fires and beats Neusterer on the block. Yeah, he's kind of funky. You don't know what's going to come out of him. A hard driven, off speed shot. Sometimes he hits with his elbow, but he's getting it done tonight. Tritons are three and five in conference. The Bows are four and four. Now the three losses coming in in a row for the Tritons, they hit under 300 in each of those losses. They're hitting into this four set cumulatively 253. Sherfon, big time serve driven at Sakanoko. What oh. a recovery shot. I love the line shot. Even though I don't like the delivery, the line is an underutilized spot on the court, which is usually neglected by the defense. What an answer when that second contact wasn't perfect. He betters the ball and scores. In rhythm for Selcho. Seven kills for Selcho. That one was an armpit sizzler. <laughs> Went low seam on that. Found it right past Neuster. How, how would you size up the way Dyer is settling in as the setter now? I think he's doing a great job, uh, you know, utilizing his middles a little bit more because they've been so effective. Um, doing a nice job. You know, getting the ball to Churfin, especially in those broken plays. Uh, doing a good job. He is doing a good job, and the Tritons are going to rest heavily on that continuing. He needs to continue to play at this level for UC San Diego to have a chance to further this match and force the all-decisive fifth frame. Sakanoko delivers the boom as he goes right into that double block and not to be undermined. So much pace off so that palm. So much, so much torque. He really unloads on that ball and does a nice job using the block. Quietly, Hawaii as a team in the four set, six of 10, air free, hitting 600. Line drive from Neusterer. A crossbody kill for the junior six foot four transfer from Orange Coast College in Sebastian Laura terminates off the first ball side out. Nice job by Laura being quick, using the block on that one, being sneaky. That serve was not an easy thing to handle no. either. No. Got to give credit to that first touch no. as well. Oh, that's for fault. Saw his feet on that one. The toss? Uh, good toss, just a little too far in front of him. He foot faulted. So, but just got to take another step back if he wants to unload on that one.
Rosenthal has a proclivity to unload with his serve. This time he took a little bit off of it. Off the block touch, that's Thim Rosenthal out oh, for yeah. Todd as Voss jumped as the decoy. It was Todd. He's got 11, steering the Bows to their 11th point in the fourth. Yeah, Jim Garrison can't be late on that block with Todd at the net. Going to expose that seam. A little cuff shot there from Schellinger. An opportunity here for Sokonoko, oh. who put a dent in the court as he catapults that one to the floor, sweetly to the surface for a seventh kill. And the Tritons are hung on seven points, which is prompti prompting Coach Rostratter to call a timeout. Yeah, what a great line hit. Gabe Dyer gave him like an inch of line, and Sonoko just took advantage of it. So Sokonoko has been living up to all the hype, taking it in now. In the The men's volleyball is certainly a global game, and nobody does it better in terms of recruiting international talent than Hawaii head coach Charlie Wade. These the guys on the team who are from outside the United States. We've been seeing a lot of Sakanoko's name tonight. I was going to say, you can say all those names, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of the big storylines for the Bows coming into the season is what they were going to do with that setter position as the set from Dyer could not be terminated into a kill from Scherfan as the lead grows to six because you had Jakob Tele, who was the AVCA Player of the Year. Oh, yeah. He the Norwegian, the, the setter extraordinaire. Last season was last year for him. Yeah. And now you got a 17-year-old doing the job yeah. at the setter position, all the while Tele is making money playing international mm -hmm. pro volleyball in Italy right now. Yeah, it's, it's a new quarterback, you know, on your team. And uh, how do you get him to distribute the ball and lead your team? And he's 17 years old. Todd is older than 17. And he's going to get his team to within three points of 17 in the four set. I feel like this is kind of like, if you're a Triton fan, this is the dangerous time here. Yeah, dangerous you, can, time. you can easily let this get further and out of reach. Every point with the utmost priority has to be capitalized. If you are a Triton fan, that will help with a service mistake from Louis Sakanoko. Yeah, and I think we're seeing a lot of uncharacteristic errors by Hawaii. I'm sure Charlie Wade will have his talk with them after the match. Laura tried all he oh. could. A burst of speed, and goodness, his head nearly yeah, hit know. the bottom of that stanchion. Like, please don't hit that. <laughs> the heart after the yes. boil touch. Just keeps himself out of harm's way. 15 for the Bows, serving to the nine of the Tritons. This is Kai Taylor. Tritons much needed score. They won the third set 25 to 12. Nine attacking airs from the Bows in the third. And it was a serving clinic in sets one oh, and two yeah. for the Bows. That's how they won those first two frames in such an authoritative-like manner. Yep, and now we've got Persley in to serve.
makes it touch. 14 kills. This Bose team, fascinating. Their, their final four matches were on the road as calling comes back in. I was talking to, we were talking to the coaching staff, Coach Wade, and mm -hmm. they had two home, or two road matches at UC Irvine last week. They flew back for a few days, took some finals, then flew back here on ah. Wednesday, fly back out on Sunday, and I think I just saw Laura fly up and I, put down I, a kill. I was gonna say, what a great swing by him on a broken play. Gabe Dyer running off the court, back setting, bump set. A nice adjustment by Laura and being able to detonate on that one. Coach Rostrader bringing in Andrew Boyle, the older brother of our libero for the Tritons. Evan Boyle hasn't played since March 15th versus CSUN. And it doesn't look like he hasn't played in that long. An ace, <laughs> steely nerves, wow. sending a message to the Bows. Yeah, what a great serve down the line by Boyle on his first serve. Mind you, he hasn't played in several matches. Oh. One step forward and one back. Still brought the excitement with an enthralling service ace, which was the team's fifth. That's half the number that the Bows have. They are hitting, by the way, 722 in set number four. And the hitting percentage oh. is going to taper even more for the Tritons as Voss had the upper hand against Garrison. 6-7, conquering 6-9. Timeout from Coach Rostratter. Yeah, got to slow that momentum down a little bit. Good idea. How does this happen? 18 swings taken by the Bows in the four set. Not one hitting error. Yeah, that's 13 kills. How are they able to engineer something like that? Well, I think they're really keying in on not making hairs, making good hitting decisions. Um, I think they got a little cute in that, uh, was that the fourth set? Yeah, or the third set. So I think that now they're, you know, doing a good job um, taking advantage of what UC San Diego is getting, giving them, hitting those seams, just making smarter hitting decisions overall. They really have. and. The last three meetings between these two, it was won by UH. And you think about this this UH team, and look, they've had their fair share of adversity with some of the injuries that they've had to deal with, with, with Hawkus. And I, I saw something that was really neat. So obviously he had the season-ending injury. Yeah. Such a stalwart and a star for the Bows. But on senior night, they rode him down as the second libero, and he oh. walked out there. And the, the standing ovation, a, a rousing moment from the crowd at Stan Sheriff on senior night, that had to have made him a little misty-eyed. Oh, absolutely. And there is nothing like the Hawaii fans. If I could do it all over again, I'd play at Hawaii. Uh, they are so loyal and so spirited and uh, you know really supportive of their team. Oh, we appreciate all of them from watching from the islands here on the mainland, checking out this action for Kirsten Olsen. I'm Brian Fenley. Four set late stages of it. Boyle receives. And oh. Laura unconventionally keeps the point going. Oh. Todd, a big boom, and it's dug by Boyle. Laura, a little finicky shot. Todd, a second swing in the rally. That's sure fun loading up and dug up in the angle off the overplay. Oh. Laura. Fist it to the floor. And that's some great defense by Andrew, or, sorry, Evan Boyle back there. Laura has been so majestic, scoring at will in the fourth when the Tritons need him the most. Yeah, he is very explosive, and I just feel like he's just got such great court awareness. Oh. Rare hitting error by Voss. They center it into Voss and he misses. Yeah, speaking of rare hitting errors. Yeah, is that his first error? Well, Maybe. I did some math. I'm not okay. very good at math, but Voss had one hitting error in his last 38 swings oh, coming geez. into this match. One in 38. 
Three hitting errors for Sherfon. That won't be a fourth. Here is number four, Laura. Wow. Way up in the stratosphere. Second on the team and kills now. That's his eighth. <laughs> and the Tritons have a little bit of a run starting to brew here in the fourth. And three blockers in Laura's face. Does a great job swiping the ball off of that block. What do you think? What have the, the Bows not done here to allow the Tritons a I, chance? Give them a little more hope. Yeah, I think that they, I think first of all, Aunt, uh, Sorry, Evan Boyle is playing great defense. He's in the right spot, and Tritons are getting a lot of transition plays and making some good decisions on them. And a couple of errors, hitting errors, unlikely hitting errors by Hawaii, by Voss, um, is, is what's getting the Tritons back into this. That Voss hitting error that we just saw moments yeah. ago, that was the first hitting error in all of the four set for UH. Wow. And to put it into perspective, we're late stages in the four yeah, set. Yeah, right? It's, they have 13 kills in this four set. Make that 14 kill or 13 skills, excuse me, in the four set. 39 kills as, as a team, which is actually one less than the Tritons have. They've got 40. Oh, wow. And they're still down two sets to one and down in the fourth by three. And look at that. As I mentioned, it, it comes on screen. <laughs> you know you're working with grade A professionals. We've got so many in the control room at UC San Diego. Yeah, absolutely. But I like the fire from the Tritons. They're not going down. They're fighting hard, playing great defense, and making some good decisions offensively. Three-point differential. And number three, Gabe Dyer, junior center. Lolly pops it over to Sakanoko. Todd against a double block. Sure fun. Oh. Leaves a well done Choi. A tattoo Ouch. that he will take back to the islands. Yeah, that one you just have to shake it off, but good lord. What a hammer down the line and oh. They went over to check on him. All the Tritons. Good show of sportsmanship there. Sakanoko with his own feverish looking swing. I said, don't you hit my libero in the face. <laughs> what a tough kid. Bose looking, if they can pull out this four set, it would be their sixth, fourth set win. A win in four sets, mind you. 14 of their 21 wins coming by sweeps. Thim off the misplay from Boyle, and he's right there at the point of attack, facing in cleanup work. Yeah, Thim just taking care of business. Knows that he needs to put that ball away. Sakanoko, what hasn't he done in this match? Garrison goes at Thim, and he ran right into it. Oh. And the Tritons wow. put up a tyrannical-looking block to stifle Thim that was, and dash his hopes. That was a Jurassic block right there. That was huge. Great moves by Garrison and Chirpon at the net. It's still a three-point score. Laura goes at Choi to make it a four-point lead, and Sakanoko does just that. Beautiful kill out of the backcourt, and the Hawaii faithful standing in unison. Yep, the freshman is not afraid to take big swings at big moments. Our first match point has surfaced. 24 serving 20. Bows winning sets one and two. Looking to finish things off here in the fourth. Sherfon with a nasty swing. Todd for the win. The team's kill leader has the final say in this match. His 15th kill puts the match away. And the Bows, the number five ranked team in the country, hold off the comeback hopes of UC San Diego, winning the fourth 25 to 20 and the first of two matches here in four sets. Yeah, the Tritons gave them all they had. Great energy, great defense, made some good adjustments, really got their middles involved.
But man, Hawaii's offense, they have a, any hitter can get hot at any time and played some great defense and served really tough. They did serve really tough. Eight, make it 10 aces as a team. They hit 536 in that four set. 286 in the match. Three players. Double digits and kills, Sakanoko, Thim, and Todd. Anthony Scherfan, the only Triton in double figures with 16 kills for UC San Diego. We're going to do this all over again tomorrow. Cannot wait. Thanks so much to our star-studded production team here at UC San Diego. For Kirsten Olsen, I'm Brian Fenley. The Bows clinch the three seed in next week's Big West Conference Tournament. But these two teams playing again tomorrow at 7 o'clock, and we'll see you then.